All right, we're going to look at the standard enthalpies of formation. Looks a little like this, and sometimes there's a little degree sign up there. Just couldn't figure out how to put it in. So this is the energy associated with the formation of one mole. That's going to be important to us uh, of a substance in its standard state. You might not know what standard state refers to. Well, that refers to the state of an element at room temperature. So, as you know, most things are solid, lots of gases, very few liquids. So, for example, metals are in the solid state, so there's a bunch of metals. I know mercury is one exception, so we probably won't have any questions with that. But anyway, there they are. And we also have diatomic and monatomic gases. There's our diatomic and monatomics group eight. I'm probably not going to deal with those in formation either, but the diatomic gases will be important. So we've got some uh, uh, things to follow when we're writing an equation. Uh, so firstly, we're going to write one mole of our desired substance, and then we're going to write the reactants and products in their standard states, and then we're going to balance the equation, but we're going to keep our desired substance with one mole. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So let's say we wanted to figure out um, the formation of sodium chloride. Now the state of sodium chloride, I guess, I just put it in solid state because, you know, table salt, you can see it. Um, could be aqueous, I guess, depends on the situation, but we'll just put it in a solid. So, like, all I want to say is essentially what's an equation here uh, for forming this compound? It's like a little synthesis equation. So, there it is. So, I'm taking sodium in the solid state, putting it with chlorine gas, and there is our sodium chloride solid. So, that follows the first rule. Second rule says we need to balance it. Uh, there, I've gone ahead and balanced it. And then the third rule says we need to do this with respect to one mole of what we're trying to form. Okay, so this is what we're trying to form. Clearly, we have a two in front of it. So we're, that means we're going to need to divide everything, all the coefficients here by two. And when you do that, you get this equation. So this would actually be the equation that uh, we would be using and it would have a, its own delta H value as well, or it could be something that we're calculating. Let's try another one here. So this one is propane. So there's my carbon in its solid state plus the hydrogen gas. Propane, like in the tank and your barbecue is in the gaseous state, so I left it there. Then you just want to go ahead and balance this one. And this one's actually finished because, again, we're after one mole of this substance, so then that would be done. And maybe even a little more complicated here, a phosphoric acid one. So that's a little bit bigger. We're probably not used to seeing an equation like that. I'm going to balance it. And then we have a two in front of our phosphoric acid, so we're gonna have to divide everything here by two, and we get that. So a couple things to consider here. Firstly, is that when we have something in the standard state, it's got a formation value of zero. So that's not gonna play into our, our future questions when we start to do some calculations here. So if you have an element in the standard state, it's got a formation of zero. zero so a couple things we need to know about the future equations that we're going to be solving so firstly we actually need an equation for for figuring out one of these delta h of formation values and here it is so the, the, I've got, all i've got here is a balanced equation and then we've got our reactant or sorry our products minus our reactants so there's our products and there are the reactants so just to follow with what's going on here is we have the coefficient coefficient we have our compound we have our compound and this value here as long as it's not an element should have a value we can look up on a table and then this just kind of repeats itself out here. So there's our coefficient, there's our coefficient, D goes there. Now there is a subtraction sign. Keep in mind that this whole bracket here could be negative, so we could have two negatives converging. And then we just again have our coefficient, coefficient, and like that. So essentially what we've got here is the, uh, the, the reaction, if you will, is equal to our products minus our reactants. Now the other thing we need is a table of values. So I just went and I Googled this one, and you can see that a lot of the substances that uh, we've been talking about here already have delta H values that are calculated. Even look at the first one here, we have silver in its solid state, it has a formation of zero. But if we're dealing with something that has silver chloride, we actually have a negative 127. So there's a whole bunch on here. There's one we just did on the last example, phosphoric acid, so it would actually have a value to it. Now you can Google it, 
or you can simply look on page 320 of your textbook for a table. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of examples here where we're going to use some of these values and do some computations. Now I made this other second part of the video. I was a little sick, so I might have a bit of an accent, but uh, bear with me as we go through it. Calculate the enthalpy change for the combustion of one mole of glucose to carbon dioxide and water. The first step when doing one of these problems is to write a balanced chemical equation. We know that for a combustion reaction, our compound is reacting with oxygen in the air and producing carbon dioxide and water. We then need to balance our chemical equation. The next step is to look up our enthalpy of formation values for the products and reactants on the table and place them in our equation. Remember that the enthalpy of reaction is equal to the sum of the enthalpies of formation of the products times their respective coefficients minus the enthalpies of formation of the reactants multiplied by their coefficients. Now in order to do these problems you would be given a table listing the enthalpies of formation of various different compounds. But in this example to save space I've listed only the values that we will need for this problem. The other thing that's important when doing these problems is to specify the state of your reactants and products because the enthalpy of formation values differ depending on the state of a compound. So for example, the enthalpy of formation of liquid water is different than that of the enthalpy of formation of solid water or gaseous water. You'll also notice that in my enthalpy of formation values, O2 is not listed. This is because the element oxygen exists in the standard state as a gas, and so the enthalpy of formation value is zero. And this holds true for any element in its standard state. Now let's plug these values into our problem. First we're looking at the sum of the enthalpy of formation values for the products. Starting with CO2, I can see that the enthalpy of formation value is negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. And I multiply this value by 6 because 6 is the coefficient in front of CO2 in our balanced chemical equation. And because I use the coefficients in my balanced chemical equation, this is why it's particularly important to balance your equation correctly. Also on my product side, I have 6 water. So I take 6, which is the coefficient in front of H2O, and multiply that by the enthalpy of formation value for water in its liquid form, which is negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole. This is the sum of the enthalpy of formation values for the products, multiplied by their respective coefficients. I then subtract the values for the reactants. I have 1 glucose, so I take 1 multiplied by negative 1260 kilojoules per mole. And then remember I stated that the value of oxygen, because it's an element in its standard state, is zero. These are the enthalpy of formation values for the reactants multiplied by their respective coefficients. And now it's a matter of correctly putting these values into your calculator to come up with the correct answer. Be very careful keeping track of your negative signs and the parentheses so you come up with the right answers. And I think it's best to do these problems step by step, writing out the values you get for each part of the equation along the way. And this leaves me with an enthalpy value for the reaction of negative 2816 kilojoules per mole. Let's look at another example. Calculate the enthalpy change for the following reaction. Ammonia plus hydrochloric acid goes to ammonium chloride. The first step is to check that you have a balanced chemical equation. And in this case our equation is already balanced. The next step is to plug our enthalpy of formation values into our equation. So we look up the enthalpy of formation values for the products and reactants on the table. On the product side we have one mole of ammonium chloride and the delta H of formation of ammonium chloride is negative 314.4 kilojoules per mole. On the reactant side, we have one mole of ammonia multiplied by the delta H of formation value for ammonia, negative 46.2 kilojoules per mole. 
and also one mole of HCl as a gas, which you multiply by its delta H formation value, negative 92.3 kilojoules per mole. We then take the sum of the values for the products multiplied by their coefficients and subtract the sum of the values for the reactants multiplied by their coefficients and come up with the delta H of reaction equal to negative 196 kilojoules per mole.